things are involved to be able to understand the response, immune response. And the lifespan, lifespan of the product, unlike the product, is very long because it directly relates to vaccinating both cohorts to adults throughout the population, general population, to protect against specific diseases. Another typical about vaccine business model is pretty much all of us in the vaccine business are have a very close, very uh, relationship with the government organizations and the healthcare authorities. Here in India, worldwide, it is the same scene because vaccines are primarily driven through the Ministry of Health and through the government. Majority of the countries, the vaccines are actually purchased by the Ministry of Health. Some of the economics of the vaccines, if you look at it, you know, um, the challenging aspects of some of the key issues are, has to do with access to technology, access to products, vaccines out there. As you know, uh, significant of this research, research happens outside India, the majority of the US and Europe. And bringing those technologies to some of the parts they need it most is a challenging task. Just an example, Hepatitis B was in the U.S. 15 years before it came to India or some of the Asian countries. So from a public health standpoint, you can see the impact it could have had if the same vaccine was available at the same time. It has to do with the, the, the de developing countries, their ability to, to drive the technology, discover it, and then finding ways to bring that to the countries it's becoming a long gap. So one of our challenges is to reduce that gap. And there is a risk of innovation. It takes cost and the time, as most of you know that. It's a long cycle, even longer than the, some of the pharma products because they are biologic in nature. Significant part of this research has to do with working with animals. That always takes a lot of effort and the variabilities are high. So the number of experiments you have to do to actually discover a vaccine and develop it is extremely complicated and long. And at the end, when you bring in a vaccine, again, you're going to need a dedicated manufacturing facility because each antigen is different. It requires, for the most part, a dedicated equipment, sometimes a dedicated building to be able to manufacture these vaccines. And needless to say, the clinical laboratory is similar to some of the pharma products, but in this case, because the vaccines are given to people who are not sick, basically they're healthy, particularly babies. Unlike uh, a cancer drug where you give to cancer patient, there is a risk benefit. Maybe the drug can improve the life, still cause some effects. But in this case, the tolerance for the safety is very low. It has to be extremely safe particularly the reason that it's given to healthy babies. So, you know, the bar is quite high. Automatically that translates to the regulatory and the clinical aspects where you have to prove that it, it's protecting the, you know, the, the indivi healthy individuals without causing any um, effects of their life. The other important point to the economics of vaccines is it's viewed, viewed as a new product. There's no such thing as a biosimilar vaccine. Because every vaccine is different. Every, every biologic is different. In this case, because of the complex nature of it, because it's, it's, it's complicated uh, way of manufacturing and the variability, the expectation is even though you're developing the same vaccine as somebody else has in the market, you're still going to have to do full development of phase one, two, three, and prove it in a way that with a comparator. So again, that, that, that increases the span of uh, the complexity, time, and cost. Last but not least, it's a fixed, fixed cost business. Means once you are getting to a vaccine and you're stuck with that, with that cost, so you're gonna have to make it work. So when you go to a new vaccine, then you have to go Another facility, another dedicated equipment, new setup again. You won't be able to use the one earlier. S significant part of these vaccines are in the pediatric area, the children. So this illustrates that 
you know, my earlier issue, one of the issues of the public health, 25% of the annual mortality rate of children under five, these diseases are preventable with the current vaccine. They still are not accessible. There's two issues. First is access to technology and products. Second is whatever vaccines that are available in the world, maybe not here, but in the U.S. and others, bringing them to the people who need it. That's also there. Now, this illustrates very well some of those uh, serious diseases where this you know, mortality is uh, reduced. So from the business side, if you look at it, it's like I mentioned before, it's one of the fastest growing markets. Again, the reasons behind this, cost-effective, because you're actually preventing it. You're not treating it. You don't have to take life long. You take a shot two, two times, three times, the disease is prevented. So that's a significant uh, impact on the healthcare. High degree of innovation, because this requires quite a bit of upfront search and to cover various uh, parts of the world, and cover the long-term memory of this vaccine that once you're given a shot, it, it remains protective nature of that vaccine in the body for many years. There is improved pricing due to significant health innovation. It means prevention is always cost less. Once you're exposed to a disease, going into the hospital and treating is always, needless to say, is, is most expensive. This, this again, that gives us some leverage in the sense of you know, an improved pricing for us. And then the other factors that are fastest growing is there's a huge unmet medical need there. So from this illustration, one of these uh, published journals, you can see 31.5 billion US dollars by two, 2013. It's not bad. And significant part of this growth is coming from the emerging markets. Essentially what I'm